Hey, what's up everybody? Um, been a while again, not been that regular with the uploads, but in this video, I want to show you how you can self-host a version of Superbase on a virtual private server. Now, chances are that you've been using the hosted version of Superbase, just like I have been, but you've exhausted the number uh, of free plans that they have. So I think they allow you to make two free projects um, and then they charge something like 20 to $30 a month. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's worthwhile to consider other options uh, and think about whether or not it makes sense to host a project on a VPS, which is cheaper. Um, and in this video, I wanna show you how you can self-host Superbase. I'm going to be doing all of this on the Hetzner Cloud. Hetzner is a service provider that provides virtual private servers. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call it Superbase. I'm going to add the project and then create a new server. So in the servers, I'm going to add a server. We can choose a location. I'm simply going to choose one in Germany. And then in, in the image, we're going to go to apps and we're going to click on Docker. So we're simply going to have a virtual private server with Docker pre-installed. Further below, I can choose the type uh, of server that I want. I'm going to be going for an Intel one and I'm going to be going to the cheapest tier. So you don't need to stress about what tier you're choosing, at least that on, on Hetzner. Uh, you can scale up your plan as your application and your load increases. Um, and in addition to that, I wanna point out that you don't pay the price you see over here right away um, if you don't use your server. I think that in the first month, the payment is solely usage-based. So if you end up not using your server, the cost is much cheaper than what you see here. Um, but anyway, it's just four euros, so it's not, not too much. Then further below, I have the chance to add an SSH key. Now we need an SSH key in order to create a connection from our computer, uh, our local machine to the server. Chances are you probably don't have an SSH key yet, so you're going to want to create one. Um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So in my command prompt, I am going to write SSH minus, and then what is it, key gen. And it is going to tell me that it's generating a public and a private key pair. Then it's going to tell me in what directory it's going to be saved. And you want to stay with the default directory that is mentioned over here. Now, the reason why you want to do that is because when you log into your server, uh, it is only going to work if you have that key saved in the right directory. So leave it as it is, and we're simply going to confirm by not changing it. And we're going to enter a passphrase. Now, one thing that might be a bit strange is that when you enter something in the keyboard right now uh, to specify your passphrase, you won't be seeing that input in the command uh, prompt over here. And that is because passwords are generally blanked out and not shown. So I'm simply going to enter one, two, three, and I'm going to confirm it by pressing one, two, three again. And as you saw just a moment ago, nothing was entered, but at the same time, it has successfully created our SSH key. So here you can see a lot of interesting stuff concerning the SSH key, some sort of random art image. I don't know what that's for, but um, in any case, if we then go to the folder that was specified a moment ago, you can see that I have the um, IDRSA and the IDRSA pub file. So these are the SSH keys that were just generated a moment ago. And in, in order to find them, you simply have to navigate to C users, then your username, and then .ssh. That's where you'll find them. Perfect, so now we have this. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to paste this SSH key. And we're going to paste the public one um, into the field in Hetzner. So we're going to uh, open this up using come at the editor and hold on. There we go. And we're simply going to take all of this, copy it, 
and then add SSH key and paste it in here. And we're going to give it an easier name. We're just going to call it max at desktop. And we're going to not set it as default, but we're simply going to add a key. Now, don't worry, I'm going to be deleting this key right after the video, so no need to remind me in the comments. Um, but now we have everything set up. We don't need to make any more changes, except for the name. We're simply going to call this server Superbase. And then we can create and buy this server. So that's great. The server is booting up, um, which is which is which is great. It's going to just take a minute to do so. And the next step that we need to do is we need to SSH into this server. So we need to create a connection between the local machine we're on and the server. All right, so in order to SSH into your server, all you need to do is go back to your command uh, prompt, and then we are going to write something along the lines of SSH root at, and then we're going to copy out the public IP, paste it in, and then we can confirm that. And then it's, if it's the first time that you're SSHing into your new VPS, it's going to say that it can't, um, that it doesn't, that the authenticity can't be established, but that doesn't matter. Um, and it's going to ask if you want to continue connecting, but we can do that. That's no problem. And it's going to ask us for the passphrase. Now the passphrase is the thing that we set just a moment ago, and that was one, two, three. And I'm going to confirm. And you can see right now we are successfully SSH'd and connected into uh, our virtual private server. So at the bottom, you can see that now it says root at Superbase. Now let's just check it out. Let's see what happens if we check out what's in the directory. So I'm going to write ls and then a and then minus l. And what this does is it shows us what's on the virtual private server. So at the moment, you can see there's not a lot on the server, <laughs> just some sort of basic cache and files um, uh, that, that you don't really need. But what's important is the next steps, which is getting Superbase onto your virtual private server. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the instruction manual provided by Superbase. I'm going to be leaving a link down in the description below. And let's open that up next to our um, command prompt. Okay, there we go. And we simply need to copy and paste the commands that they have written down in their manual into our um, command prompt. So let's go and copy the first command. And it's going to take just a moment. Now that it's been successfully loaded, we can go ahead and check out what's in the directory again. And you will see that now in the bottom, we have Superbase. So we're going to change directory into that new file which we've created. And now we need to copy the environment variables. Um, there we go. And we're going to Docker Compose pull to pull the latest images. So now that all the images have pulled successfully, we're going to start the services by writing docker compose up and the flag over here, minus D that you can see at the end, means it's detached so we can continue using our um, command prompt over here. So now all of our services have started up and we're ready to go. Um, if you want to check the status of all of these um, services that are running, then you can simply write docker compose ps and it's going to give you a bit of an overview but as you can see here uh, it says that we are up since 26 seconds ago so that looks great so the next thing that you'll want to do is sort of see the dashboard right when you're in the hosted version of superbase you can go to their website and you see the dashboard as soon as you log in you want to do the same thing now that you have it self-hosted. And in order to do that, we can create a new browser window and we need to go ahead and copy the IP address from our 
um, VPS provider. So we have the public IP address and we're going to copy it out. And next we can paste it into our browser window. And then when we navigate to it, well, nothing shows. That's not that great. But let's try again by adding the port at the end, which is 8,000. Oh, now it's going to work. All right, it's asking us for a sign-in. And upon very first sign-in, you have these default values. So the default username is Superbase, and the default password is, this password is insecure and should be updated. And then you can see that we are on our self-hosted version of Superbase. This is all um, our running on our virtual private server. You have your table editor, you have the databases, you have the authentication. So everything is running perfectly fine.